And as we get into these summer months, more and more people venturing outside for cookouts. Maybe you're out on one of the trails, hiking or biking. A little fun in the sun, but with all of that comes the risk of being exposed to poison ivy, sumac, or oak. Dr. Tony Heiser from Providence Health has a look at some natural remedies to help. Good morning to you. Good morning, Derek. Now, you were telling me during the break that one of the keys is to, if you know that you've come in contact with this, hit it early. Yeah, absolutely the best thing. So, poison ivy, sumac, or oak, they actually have the same oil that causes the reactions, a funny name called urethriol. Okay. It's an oil, so it takes a little bit of time to get down into the skin to so have the reaction. Get it before it really gets in deep into your pores. Absolutely. A higher quality soap, sometimes they're called degreasing soaps, mm -hmm. um, are going to be recommended because you want to make sure that you get as much of that oil off as possible. If you don't have a strong soap, I actually recommend some lemon juice mixed with some soap. Lemon juice is an astringent, it will help break up some of the oils. But the main thing you want to do is take a washcloth or a loofah or something. The friction. Really scrub. Okay. Exactly. Scrub it off. And if you do it within about two to six hours, you can actually really uh, minimize any effects you'd have. So let's say we don't do that and we yes. come to the realization maybe a little too late. Where do we go from there? Yeah. So sometimes poison ivy will get a lot of fluid buildup. So I actually like a baking soda compress. You can put it in um, like a bathtub if you want to mm -hmm. soak in a bathtub. Typically three to one if you're going to do a sponge, um, parts of baking soda to water. Okay. Um, that will help if you let it dry. It will help pull out some of the fluid, so it doesn't swell so much. You get some of those really nasty bubbles. So will you see it? I mean, will you be able to see that process working if you, if you use something like a baking soda? I recommend doing it every every hour for um, probably four to six times. Okay. It's going to help draw some of the fluid out. If you get those nasty bubbles from the your skin irritation, it can actually help dry them out. And I've heard people talk about using Benadryl, but you can go, as we are today, the natural way. <laughs> yeah, Benadryl can really make you sleepy. So if you've got to go to work or something like that, it makes it really difficult. Uh, quercetin with a Q, it's kind of a funny name, but it actually works very well, similarly to Benadryl, to be an antihistamine. So if you're going to itch a lot and it's really bothering you, this can actually help. And lastly, what's the, you brought some kind of a weed. Explain that. Yeah, this is the one most people don't know about. There's something called jewel weed. Mm -hmm. Jewel weed is actually grown a lot of times in close proximity to the poison ivy. So here's the thing. You'll, you'll see, I, I got this in Walmart. Walmart will help carry some of this stuff. If you don't get a good brand, they might put like 1% jewel weed in okay. with some like soybean oil or something. If you get a really high quality one, the, the research says it can actually um, inhibit a lot of the poison ivy effects. So it, it, a good little salve can actually be, go a long way. Basically, this is stuff that you should, if you're going to the mountains, if you're going somewhere, just have this stuff maybe with, you know, kind of packed away just in case you need it. Absolutely. All right, Dr. Tony Heiser, thank you very much. Yes, Derek. The time now is 834. Christine, Terrence, I got to be honest with you, I'm very lucky. Hasn't happened. But I'm actually fearful that it might be growing in my backyard. I've got uh, a natural area. I was and thinking then I'm like, the same I, thing, I, What is this? So I've got the big gloves on. I was thinking the same thing. I've been gone for two weeks, and I just kind of peeked out in the back this morning. Right. And I was like, yeah, there's some new growth there I that was, I don't I even know what it is. I was Googling yesterday because my dog was itching, and I think you can get it from the dog's fur if oh. you're petting them. And so I'm freaked out oh, about it. Yeah. Wow. I think we do have it as well.